So the next bit I want to hit on here is going to be the upcoming movies and TV section and how they tie into comics. That's right, because there's a fantastic category on Key Collector that's constantly being updated because as things happen, well, it changes the market. Let's chat about The Boys. Okay, so I know you love Watchmen. All right. Let's put it right here, man. Yeah. But I got to tell you that my favorite TV show based on comics was The Boys last year. It was your all-time favorite for last year? I believe so. I would yeah. say yes. It would be my number two. I think The Boys was so damn good. And we recently had a trailer drop for number two, the second season, and I'm so excited about it. Yeah, I mean, we get to see kind of a creepy kid power thing going on here. Some bright burn stuff going on. Yeah, and I mean, I like that movie. You like that movie. But we can see somebody like a child with superpowers. If they go in sideways, you got to stay out of their path. That's right. It is creepy. This trailer, you see a young Homelander being trained by the government to become the superhero of our country. It's kind of almost a Red Sun type of thing going on, but a little different because it's Homelander. We know how messed up that guy gets. So why are we talking about this trailer? Well, because we have a comic book on this category that has been showcased again since the first time the show came out and debuted. We have the boys issue number three. This is the first appearance of the seven. You got the first appearance of Homelander and a handful of other characters that are in the show, a train. And this comic book is pretty cool. I think the cover's dope because what is the cover of? So we kind of like you, it's this comic book. We actually have a comic book cover. And in that comic book cover is a smaller comic of The Seven. That's right. So it's like their comic inside their comic. Yeah, they debut on a comic on a comic book cover that's actually real. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And this book is, is it's a great comic book to spec on, but it's one that's really fun to own because there's so many characters that are appearing in it. And... I feel like over time as the series gets season after season, there's so many like random characters in this run. If you've read the boys that the ones that are really going to stand out long term because the, the tone of the show and the book are so different are like the major appearances of heroes that really land with the public, similar to Homelander, a train and the rest of the seven. As much as I love the boys, I want to touch on this next comic because the movie, when I was younger, that I really enjoyed was RoboCop. You a big RoboCop fan? I was, man. Like I was too, dude. I freaking loved that. That was the coolest thing. Uh, Alex Murphy and like OCP being the bad guys. And dude, the death this... scene that lasts like 30 minutes. Oh he just keeps God. getting shot and then keeps dying and just doesn't die. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, and I mean, I can't say I loved all the versions of RoboCop that <laughs> came out all the other movies. Oh, they get weird. But here's the thing. Why are we talking about RoboCop right now? Well, in November... Abe Forsyth was, uh, what's a good word? Announced? Yeah, announced as a director for RoboCop Returns. So we're going to have more RoboCop, which I'm okay with to see an updated version. But I it's called RoboCop Returns. So it's updated, but I think what they're going to do is go the sequel route that they did similar to Halloween, which is basically redo the second film. Pretend like the franchise that we don't care for care about as much Pretend like that never happened and remake it better, but keep the respect of the first movie intact. You can do it. I say do it. I'm in for it. I'm down. If I see something I don't like, I will not be excited about it. <laughs> but I always like to give it a chance, at least before I see something, you know, before I poop on it too much. But I'm excited for a Robocop, especially if you're telling me that Halloween was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. So if they can pull that off, because number one was great. I loved the first RoboCop. So if they just want to launch Pat off that, and they can cast it right. So this next book we're going to discuss leads to a new series for the most part. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm hearing a lot of positive buzz. It is on my soon-to-watch list. All right, And from what I understand, it's been casted very well. So apparently, Henry Cavill, you're crushing it. And we're talking about The Witcher. Now... I know that the Dark Horse comics that came out, they've been spiking. This was a franchise that I only knew from the video game. I assumed that that is the origin of The Witcher, and to my surprise, that is not the case. So we're talking about the first comic appearance of The Witcher, right? Since it was published in Poland 
And you have to translate that. The name is actually Weitzman or Witzman Comics. And comics is spelled with two Ks, K-O-M-I-K-S. So if you're going to be Googling this, make sure to spell that with two Ks. And you're looking for issue number eight. First appearance of The Witcher from back in 1993. This was introduced to me this week. Thanks, Key Collector. Oh, and we got to throw this one in here on the list. I'm stoked about it because it's one of my favorite Copper Age keys. We got the silent issue, G.I. Joe, Larry Hama goodness. What's going on with this character? We're talking about Storm Shadow. Storm Shadow. Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. You got the perfect balance. Good versus evil. Okay? Now... We have a third installment of the movie coming out for this G.I. Joe series, and it's titled Snake Eyes. So now that Storm Out of Shadow has been casted, you know that G.I. Joe Comics 21 is buzzing like crazy. And it's a well-deserved buzz because this is a classic issue. The entire thing is silent, and this was something that was groundbreaking at the time. And it's a comic book that I've actually heard multiple writers and artists explain like as far as like the impact it had on their creativity and and just on the medium it just changed the way they looked at comic books because when you don't have text you have to write the comics according to the art but fun little side note i chatted with larry hama about this and it was such a disappointing story to hear about how this came to be he basically told me that it had zero to do with creativity and all to do with deadlines that he had to make that were just unrealistic that was being like given to him by Marvel. So he's like, oh, I'll just do it. It's silent issue. We can save the time on writing. He did not realize how big of a deal that decision would be. I wrote and drew the 22-page story in three days. Well, we all say necessity is the mother of invention. So he needed something quick. And there you go. You, he invented something timeless and memorable. There you go. And this book is seeing gains as we speak because this movie is about to come out. But also, it's a major key of the Copper Age that people love. So keep an eye out for it on the hunt because if you can find a lower grade copy on the cheap, they always sell, man. They always sell. They always move. Always, there's always someone looking for that silent issue. Yes, I have that silent book in my collection. I think people should have it as well. But don't be silent out there, guys. Make some comments down below. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe button. Be a part of this community, man. We really love you guys out there.